How do you see the world? Now Rob Moore in his book Money says that people see the world the way they see it and not how it is. Now if you take for example a two people who are maybe one's wealthy and one is poor, even though both of them will pass through this world, they will both see the world in completely different ways. And sometimes, you know, in your life you may come upon some event that will kind of change how you see the world. It's as if they do a little click or it has maybe changed the glasses that you're seeing the world with, but you're going to see it in a different way. Now I remember years ago, probably like some people, maybe yourself here on this video or this podcast, I came in contact with MLM, so network marketing or multi-level marketing, whatever you want to call it. Some people call it a scam, a rip-off, a pyramid scheme, whatever, but I came in contact with that years ago. And one of the things that kind of made a big change in my head was when the person got the flip chart out and they got the markers and they started drawing the circles. Now, if you've never been to a network marketing meeting, you probably don't know about that. But if you have, you're probably nodding along. You probably have seen that displayed out for you. Now, what they do on the flip chart was that the leader had actually um, drawn a circle and they had written you in it. So this was me in this large circle. And then what they did then was they said, what you have to do is you have to go out for find four or five people like yourself or maybe 10 people like yourself who are interested in maybe their health or interested in starting a business. And what they would do is they would draw a line of circles below that circle. And then what they do is they would draw lines from the main circle down to the smaller circles. And then they would take each of those smaller circles and draw another 10 people. So what would happen is you would go out and you would recruit 10 people to sell the products or to, to create maybe or have this business opportunity. And then each of those people you would train them then how they could actually go out and find 10 people of their own. So as the kind of triangle was going down or the pyramid was going down, it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, the big kind of wake up call for me when I seen that was that I could make money on other people's efforts. So for example, there's only so many people I could get in front of. There was so only so many diet kits I could sell. There was only so much money I had actually to, to buy all the materials before I did that. So I was kind of limited in what I could do, but I could call on the people below me. I could help train them and I could help them sell their diet kits or whatever they needed to do. But I would get a percentage of their profits up to me as well. So it would happen if I earned maybe 10% from each of those 10 people below me. I would have maybe 100% profits that I had made for myself, but I would have another 10% from each of those people. So you'd add it up then, that's 200% of profit I would have for me and the 10 people below me. And then there was people then below me, so I'd get a smaller percentage passed up. So what I found was that I could actually make money not only on what I was doing, but what on other people are doing. Now, if you have a business, you're probably well aware of this kind of you know, thinking, you know, you have your, your business, but all your employees do all your work for you. So whatever efforts you have are gonna be multiplied by the amount of employees you have. So if you had five employees working for you, they're doing five times the work that you would be able to do on your own. And that means that you can get in front of more people. You can help more customers, you can sell more products, but you get the idea. But when I seen that circles on the flip chart, it kind of, it kind of opened up this box in my head that I couldn't close down, which made me think, well, I don't need to rely on everything I do. If I could come up with some kind of strategy in life where I could take a sample or a small piece of everybody else's effort and have that passed up to me, I could make more money from it. Now, there were other times when I did have other experiences that did the same thing for me as well, that changed my thinking. And one of those was when I got into self-publishing and into writing. You know, I found that if I wrote an article today for my blog, not only was it maybe, you know, an hour of my time today, but when I put that blog up on my, on the blog today, or sorry, that blog post on the blog today, that blog post would be up there for as long as I paid for my internet fees or paid for my web hosting or whatever. But that blog post could be up for weeks, it could be up for months, it could be up for years, it could be up for decades. And that one hour of work of me writing that blog post could repay me over and over again by attracting readers, by attracting customers, by maybe selling products. And the more I added those blog articles on, so the blog was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Again, I, more people were gonna find that blog. I was gonna attract more people to it. 
and again I was going to get more traffic and all those things from it so I quickly realized that an hour's work wasn't an hour's work again I'd mentioned it before in one of the podcast episodes when I used to be a shelf stacker you know I only got paid for an hour of stacking shelves whereas when I was actually writing my children's books at home an hour of my time was probably paying me a hundred times over than it was and I didn't need to be there to do it again that was another kind of wake-up call for me was that you know when you write a book you can be selling that book 24 7 in the Amazon Kindle store you're not limited to where you can sell it you know if you had maybe a bookstore and you were selling your own books in your own bookstore on the main street where you live you can only sell to those people in your area whereas if you have a book on any platform Amazon Kindle for example you can sell that book all over the world people anywhere in the world right now could buy your book so you're making sales everywhere and that was another big up wake up call for me now as I said the art is kind of moments where things happen that kind of you know click that little thing in your head and you see the world in a completely different way so even though you may see the world the way it is the way you think it is there are people right now who are seeing it in a completely different way and rather than you maybe just kind of you know thinking well this is the way it's always going to be you know think about that for a moment about the two people walking through life you have the rich man the poor man how do they see the world differently you know just because you see the world in a certain way doesn't mean it's right you know it may be correct to you you may look around you and you may see all the evidence of how you're correct again it's like driving a white car if you drive a white car you look around you see white cars everywhere but there are other people out there happily driving black cars red cars blue cars and green cars all going down the highway of life you know all living different lives but because you are in your white car and you're only seeing other people in white cars you think that is the way it is so I want to ask you today before I switch off here how do you see the world because maybe the way you see the world is completely different from everybody else now maybe the way other people see the world isn't the right way to see it again you have people who probably are maybe terrorists or try to do harm to people they probably see the world in a different way to everybody else so not every way is a better way but there may be a better way in seeing things than the way you're seeing them right now so you know don't be afraid to experience things don't be afraid to you know read more you know watch more kind of get outside your niche or your genre if everybody else all the authors are doing things a certain way is that the best way to do it they may be seeing the world in a certain way but you may come across somebody else who has different techniques has different marketing tips or something like that and they see the world in a different way and because they see it in a different way don't discount them you know don't be somebody who you know like I've written an email before I said you should go and try and learn something from Trump supporter now that might horrify you if you're not a Trump supporter because you might see Trump supporters as a certain way but what I meant by that was don't no kind of look in your own niche and see what everybody else is doing have a look outside it have a look and see what other people are doing you know for the longest time I used to listen to a fitness podcast by Jamie Alderton not because I was trying to get into shape but because he had built a gym up from nowhere it had actually been on the outskirts of town it had actually been near a prison so it was probably in one of the worst locations you could have a gym so he knew if he needed to make that gym successful he had to come up with great advertising ways he needed to find some way to drive people to it and you know it's a kind of rags from riches story so I was kind of listening to that for what I could glean from it and what I could use for my writing business so look outside your niche you know listen to different podcasts read different magazines have a look and see what way things are being sold and maybe try out some of those things that may open your eyes up to some ways that maybe you haven't thought of before and you'll see the world in a completely different way rather than the people you are competing with right now so get your thinking cap on today you know rub off those goggles have a look at the world in a different way and you'll be surprised by what you find and as I said just like the flip chart with those circles on it I have never seen you know my vision of the world before that has completely changed and it's very hard for you to actually to cram back into that little box to go back to where you were before because once it's like Pandora and once it's opened you can't close it again so try that out today you know whatever way you can open your eyes up to new opportunities or the way other people are doing things that are different from yourself because we all see the world in a completely different way now if you'd like to ask me a question or if you'd like to find out where these episodes videos podcasts and everything else is if you do a search on Google, Facebook, iTunes, Yahoo, whatever, do a search for Writecom, W-R-I-T-E-C-O-M-E dot com. You'll find the content all over the web. And if you'd like to ask me a question, you're very welcome to reach out to Barry J. McDonald at gmail.com. 
And if you head over to the Rightcom site right now, again, W-R-I-T-E-C-O-M-E.com, you'll find a great free report at the moment, which is called Words to Welt. And in it, I'm going to show you 10 different ways you can make money from your writing. So if that intrigues you, if you'd like to try it out, if you'd like to see the world maybe in a different way than you're seeing it right now, head over, download the free report, and let me know how you get on with it. And as always, thanks for sharing your time again today. Take care. Bye-bye.